Hello everyone, my name is Crystal, just in case you are new here, and welcome back to my channel. Today I have my Horror 24 Presents Fright Week TBR, which is a readathon that I am hosting along with Marcy Reads, Rain from Brews and Binds, and Carol from Carol Marie Reads. We are so excited for this readathon. I have changed my TBR so many times, so this is like tentative because I'm filming this ahead of time, I might change my mind. Um, but we have five prompts, uh, super casual readathon. There will be a live show on my channel on October 30th at 7 p.m. We're gonna host a little bit of a Halloween party if you'd like to join and just discuss the books that we read or are reading for Fright Week. Uh, Fright Week is from October 24th to October 31st, and I just am so thrilled to be hosting a Halloween themed readathon. Now, I know there are so many readathons out there right now, but for me, as someone who has a very hectic lifestyle, I just cannot do all of the maps and paths to take and all those crazy things of readathons. I applaud all of you that put so much time into your readathons. I think it's amazing. But just for me personally, and I know the girls that I'm hosting this with, we feel that we just can't keep up with you guys. So this is the perfect spooky readathon for Halloween lovers, horror lovers that want something a little bit more simplified. So I'm going to share with you the books that I'm going to be reading for this readathon along with books that I could recommend for you guys for the prompts. So let's just get into it. So the first prompt is to read a book that takes place on Halloween. I'm going to be reading The October Boys by Adam Millard or Milliard. Uh, I heard amazing things about this book. It does take place, I believe, in Great Britain, or somehow America comes into play. I don't know much about this book, but I just know that it takes place on Halloween night, and things get really spooky, and I'm so excited to get into it. It's also, I think it might be free on Kindle Unlimited, or really, really cheap on Kindle Unlimited right now, so if you're interested in reading along with me, um, definitely check that out for yourselves. I have it on my Kindle, and I'm just so thrilled to make this the first book of my readathon. Well, other books that I can recommend to you guys that do take place on Halloween or like on or around Halloween. Um, I know it's hard, like doing these prompts, I didn't think it would be this hard to find books that actually take place on Halloween. There are a lot of Halloween related books, but like actually taking place on Halloween kind of rough. So a few of the books that I can recommend for you guys that do take place on Halloween are Kill Creek by Scott Thomas. Uh, I believe like once you open the book it says October 31st, whatever year it was. Um, but yes, it does take place on Halloween, but it does follow our characters throughout the entire year, almost back to Halloween of what's going on. Um, also, there's Something Wicked This Way Comes and also The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury. Uh, Something Wicked This Way Comes, I want to say it takes place the week before for Halloween or it might be on Halloween um, I don't remember but I know it's total Halloween vibes that book so if you are looking for like a shorter book to read also the Halloween tree does take place on Halloween night it is about a group of friends who go trick-or-treating and somehow their friend Pip goes missing and the characters I think it's like five kids. They have to go looking for their friend Pip to make sure that Pip is okay. And they end up traveling all to all these different worlds and how all these different worlds celebrate Halloween. So it's kind of like a little Nightmare Before Christmas vibe, um, a little kind of like Halloween Town vibe. It's a really cute story. It's one of my favorites. I try to read it every year around Halloween. Kill Creek, let's get back to that. Kill Creek is about a group of authors who go on this podcast and the podcast asks them to stay overnight in this haunted house. Um, and all these authors are authors from the horror genre, but like different subgenres, like some read, uh, write for children, some are young adult, one is adult. Like, so there's your Stephen King, there's your Ray Bradbury, like, there's the, just you can kind of place who's who in those authors. Um, and it basically is 
just like a haunting. So it's a really great story. I probably recommend it in all of my recommendations videos. So if you've been watching me for a long time, you're probably like, oh, she's recommending Kill Creek again. But yes, I am recommending Kill Creek again. Also, believe it or not, the Southern Book Club Guides Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrick does have a very large section that does take place on Halloween in it. So if you are interested in reading that book, I highly suggest you picking that up because that will be a great read. It's one of my favorite reads this year. I read it during quarantine and it just made me so happy. It was just so, so good. I can't wait for more books by Grady Hendrix. He is one of my favorite authors. So the Southern Book Club Guides guide to slaying vampires why do i can't i just can't say it today but is about basically a group of like housewives from like the early 90s uh and they read all these like horrible books like their husbands think that they read these romance novels and all this stuff but they're really reading like serial killer books horror books um and each section of the book is dedicated to the book that they're reading in the book club which i think is really cool um so there's like you know they're reading one of ann rule's books the stranger beside me like there's just that dynamic to it and it's funny because the husbands think that they're reading like these these romance novels but they're not so some guy just decides he comes to town and he claims that he is like the nephew of this neighbor of theirs and ends up being you know it could possibly be something supernatural something's just not right about him and weird things start happening in the town and the book club kind of just solves it it's really great um i don't know if that sounds like it piques your interest but it really piqued mine and i'm just i read it in maybe one or two sittings i do have a vlog of me reading it um and i'll link it in the cards here for you guys to check out if you'd like but i just love that book so i highly recommend it and it does take place on halloween so the next prompt is read a book with a pumpkin on the cover and i'm going to be reading dark Harvest by Norman Patridge. This is, I want to say it's a novella. It's not that long. I got it on Kindle as well. A lot of Kindle books I'm going to be reading for <laughs> this readathon. Um, but it is about like this pumpkin scarecrow creature thing that like comes back on Halloween in this small town and like kills people, I think. I don't know. But I'm really excited. It sounds super creepy and I can't wait to read it. So a couple books that I can recommend for you for this, because again, this is a hard prompt. Um, and I'm really interested to see what all of you guys are reading as well, because then I'll be able to expand my horizons of books with pumpkins on the cover. But what I came up with for you is Halloween Party by Agatha Christie, which is a mystery, gothic mystery, a whodunit mystery by the queen herself. And it takes place at a Halloween party. So I feel like it would be a great book to read for the last final week of Halloween. It's super creepy and I think it's just a great story to read and it it ends in November so it's actually a great book to read for the last week of Halloween but it does um, have a lot of Halloween elements to it and it does take place on Halloween night so you could kind of swap and double up for the challenges as well for that which a lot of the books I have here you can double up on and we are allowing you to double up for this readathon there are no rules if you want to read one book this entire readathon that's fine with me it's one week I find it very hard to read multiple books in a, in a week so um, if this is all you could do then that's all you could do and that's that the next book that I'm gonna to recommend to you is Halloween season by Lucy A. Schneider. Now this is also a collection of short stories, I believe. It has the most glorious cover I've ever seen. It really was a complete like cover buy for me, but at the same time, everyone's been talking about it and I've heard nothing but great things. I have not read it yet, but I am recommending it to you guys. I'm, well, I'm currently reading it now. I wanted to read it before the readathon because I'm just so excited about it, but it is pretty spooky so far. I read like the first like it's kind of like a poem, like an ode to Halloween, and it's really nostalgic, and I just love it. So, highly recommend that book. So far, I'm loving it, and it has the most glorious, nostalgic-looking cover. It just reminds me of, ha like, my view of Halloween as a child is that cover. It's just perfect. Next, I have Dead Leaves by Kellen Patrick Burke. This, of course, has a great 
pumpkin on the cover and it is also a collection of short stories as well and it has nine short stories of the witching season it's called it's really great i read it last halloween and i loved it so so much um there are stories that take place on halloween so you might want to double up on that just to let you know uh but it does have a, a glorious like pumpkin like pumpkin on the cover final book i want to recommend to you guys for this prompt is the legend of sleepy hollow by washington irving it's a very small book and it's a great story and it's if you're someone who enjoys classics and you haven't read this one yet it does have a pumpkin on the cover so this is a great way to um introduce some classics to your readathon especially since it's on the shorter side it's like a hundred or some pages it's really not that long at all um so if you're interested in that that does have a pumpkin on the cover the next prompt is read a book by a diverse author horror author um and i have some great recommendations for you guys but the book that i'm gonna read for this is cemetery boys by aiden thomas they have been so buzzed about on instagram and i had to pick this up this is actually the barnes and noble like ya book club pick for the month as well um the author is a queer trans latinx and they created this amazing little story that everybody's loving and i just got to show you how amazing this cover is this is the barnes and noble um hardback edition it's so cool but this is a story that has a lot to do with things that are going on today, but also it is about necromancy, which I love about the Latino culture is that they incorporate a lot of like necromancy in their folklore. And I just love reading about that. I find it so interesting. So basically our main char character, Yadriel, is trying to prove something to their family that they are capable of carrying on like the family magic i'm assuming so they go to the cemetery and they try to bring back his cousin who had passed away but accidentally brings back the wrong spirit so i'm really excited to see where this story goes and this is a debut by the author and i can't wait to give you guys my thoughts on it some horror books that I can recommend to you guys in the diverse category would be The Changeling by Victor Laval. Now this is a story kind of, it's about grief as well. It's very like how Pet Cemetery really, it, it's a horror but it also centers around grief and our main character is mourning the loss of his wife and their baby and he goes into like these woods it's very folklore inspired as well and very like fever dream ish um i highly recommend it definitely check it out i don't want to give too much away i believe they made a movie about it but i haven't seen that so yeah but it is a very well-known well-loved story and i highly recommend you picking it up also, The Good House by Tanner Reeve Du, who I absolutely love Tanner Reeve Du. This is the scare, probably one of the scariest books that I've ever read, and it's about a haunted house, so check, check that out. Also, I'd love to recommend Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia because, oh my goodness, this book, I just read it. I'm obsessed. I love it. I just want all gothic vibes so so spooky so weird of a story but so weird in the most perfect way i can't wait to read more from sylvia Moreno garcia i've heard amazing things about her other works as well so i can't wait to put them up but if you want a quick gothic horror read pick up mexican gothic i could not put it down i i'm just being honest with you guys i just could not put that book down and then next i have confessions by kane mineo who is a japanese author and her book confessions has been translated to the u.s so you could definitely get your hands on a copy of it now but i heard it's one of the scariest books out there i have not personally read it yet but i know it is about a teacher whose students kill her daughter and yeah she kind of sets them up it sounds really crazy and creepy and scary and murderous and i would love to check it out so that's another one that you guys could add to your list of recommendations our next prompt is um read a 
manga or a graphic novel. Um, and for that, I'm going to be reading Yuzumaki by Junji Ito. I will be reading this author for the first time and I am really nervous about it. I'm a little scared. I've heard that this book is so creepy and I can't wait to read it. <laughs> but um, I would definitely recommend anything by this author. I think it has to do with like spirals. So that sounds just so spooky to me. But um, yes, recommendations for this topic. Junji Ito, for sure. Anything by Junji Ito. Um, also, Joe Hill came out with a new graphic novel called Basket Full of Heads, and it looks terrifying. I have a sample of it on my Comixology account, and I would love to read that. So I might add that as a bonus as well to this readathon. Also, I'd like to recommend The Walking Dead comic series. Uh, graphic novel ser series. It's really good. I really enjoyed the comics and the graphic novels a lot more than the TV show towards the end. So definitely check that out and get into it if you like. They're quick reads. Like I said, if you have a Comixology account like I do too, sometimes they have them for free and they might have them for free right now for Halloween. I don't know. Also, I'd like to recommend The Adventures, uh, the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. I really love that series so much. I can relate it takes place in Salem, Massachusetts. It's just a fun graphic novel series to get into and I have them on my phone so when I'm at work and I have a little bit of downtime I love to just read a little bit about Sabrina and her adventures. Our final prompt is read a short story collection or anthology and there's so many that I can recommend here. I mean, I feel like a lot of the books that I've already recommended also can fit into that category because there's not that many like Halloween related books out there. Um, there's like with spooky content, but not necessarily like Halloween themes. So there's just a lot more short stories centered around the night of Halloween. Um, so I definitely have a lot of anthology series for you guys that, um, that I just really enjoyed and some that I'd like to get to as well. The anthology series that I'm going to be reading more from is Echoes, which I have on my shelf right under here. It is a huge bind up of short stories and that is by, edited by Ellen Datlow. There are so many famous authors in there. Um, Alice Hoffman has a ghost story in there. Paul Tremblay has a ghost story in there. Um, Stephen Graham Jones has a ghost story in there. It's all paranormal ghost stories in one big anthology bind up. So I definitely would like to recommend that to you guys as well. I haven't completed the short story collection yet so I'm gonna count it as part of my task for Fright Week because I just absolutely love paranormal stories and I was reading it and then I decided to save it for Fright Week because I feel like it would be perfect for them. I would also like to recommend to you guys Haunted Nights which is edited by Ellen Datlow as well. Haunted Nights is a collection of a bunch of short stories that take place on Halloween uh, really creepy, scary. Some of those stories are really, have really stuck with me and they are also by some famous horror writers as well. I'd like to recommend October Country by Ray Bradbury, which is a little bit more of a toned down, scary short story collection. I really enjoy the short stories in there. They're a little outdated, so the language is a little not up to par with today's standards, but I do recommend it because I think it is an excellent, excellent short story collection. It's perfect, perfectly scary for the season. Also, I'd like to recommend Scary Stories We Tell in the Dark. Um, you guys know about that. It, it's just an amazing book series from our childhoods and I just really love it. So I definitely recommend that as well. I recommend Night Shift by Stephen King. It's a shorter short story collection by him. All of those stories are very scary. I just recently read all of them. Um, I had read a few here and there throughout the years but I never actually read through the short story collection and it was so good. I just highly recommend that. Um, as well and I don't think you'll be disappointed because they're perfect for our, the spooky season. Also, I'd like to recommend Doorbells at Dusk. This is another short story collection that does take place on Halloween night so you can double up with this. Um, Doorbells at Dusk also has a lot of spooky stories that take place on Halloween. I didn't really love it but it does remind me of Trick or Treat the movie a little bit so 
um, especially the cover. It just reminds me of that a little bit, so I highly recommend it. And of course, I'm here to recommend to you Edgar Allan Poe, um, just anything. He wrote so many short stories, um, and there's so many bind-ups of them, whether it's at Barnes & Noble or your Amazon, but reading a couple of short stories from Edgar Allan Poe could really put you into the Halloween spirit. And I recently just listened to Harpies in the Trees. She read The Raven, and she just did such a great job. I'm actually going to link her channel down below. She just hit two 2k and she's just amazing if you have not watched any of her videos she is a true artist she creeps me out but i just love what she's doing so keep up the good work and yeah so that's pretty much it for my horror and 24 presents fright week readathon uh, i hope you guys join us like i said our readathon is taking place from october 24th to october 31st it is a week-long readathon, super casual. You could double up on the prompts. Just please join us for our live show on my channel at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Pacific Time if you'd like to join in the conversation of what we read and have a little Halloween get-together with us. Uh, not too many of us are going to be doing anything this year for Halloween, so why not come drink some wine and hang out with us for Fright Week. I will leave... All the information for the readathon in the down bar down below along with links to my co-host channel if you want to check their channels out they will be putting up their tbrs very soon uh yeah so that's pretty much it that's all i have for you guys today and please join us like i said for fright week and I can't wait to see all of your TBRs. If you made a TBR already, please link it in the comments down below. I'd love to check it out. If you like this channel and you want to see more from me, please just like and subscribe down below. And I'll be talking to you guys soon. Bye!